everybody, welcome to another episode of Movers and Shakers in Paul. Um, I'm super excited, actually a bit starstruck. I've got Roberto <laughs> Kyle here. Um, Roberto got, actually gave me some of his time, also a very busy man. Uh, Roberto is an actor and a performer. He's been busy, very busy on stage. Um, currently, he's on Knaps of Carols, but he can tell you a bit more about that. So Roberto, thanks so much for taking time to see me. Thank you so much for having um, me. I know Max. you're very busy. So, as always, uh, as way of introduction, which primary school and which high school? <laughs> well, um, hello everyone. Um, I attended William Lloyd Primary School. Okay. Um, and then I went on to complete my secondary education at um, Klenielberg Secondary School. Cool. And highlight of Klenielberg Secondary School, your band. Ah, I think that's by highlights. Okay. Um, but I think, uh, wow, I think a moment that was really pivotal for me, and I think I brought this up in, in, in yeah. one of our interviews before, yeah. was probably when I was at um, our matric uh, valedictory, yeah. um, and I saw a doctor mm -hmm. um, deliver a speech. She was there to deliver a speech, and she handed out a poem called The Siderata yeah. by Max Ehrman, yeah. um, and she gave all the matrics of that year a copy. Yeah. And... Um, I remember reading it and I felt like it changed my life. So, I mean, it's, it's the mantra by which I've, I've built my, my life. Okay. So I think that's, that's a moment that will always stand out mm. for me when I think about attending my, my secondary yeah. schooling years in, in Paul. So what is the mantra? Ah, uh, a bit of it goes, go yeah. placidly amid the noise and the haste and remember what peace there might be in silence. Okay. And as oh, far nice. as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others, even to the dull and the ignorant. They too have their story. Wow. <laughs> that is deep, eh? After high school, so I first wanted to find out, was this acting always something that you thought oh, from young age? Or when did that bug bite you? I knew I was going to go into performance, mm -hmm. whether it would be music or acting. Yeah. Um, but I mean... I get always thought about it. Yeah. My own advice is that I always put it on William Lloyd. Yeah. And I think that really, really just ignited the spark. Mm -hmm. um, and when I went to high school, I was enrolled um, into the Frank Peterson Music Center. Okay. Where I did classical voice training for five years. So wow. I would go to, and when people ask me which, which high school I attended, I always refer to both schools because it felt like Mm. I attended two schools at the yeah, same yeah. time. So I would go to like car in and come home at 2.30. And yeah. then I would go to music school okay. um, to be there starting my class at like 3. And then I would come back home at 7 okay. for five years nonstop. So I would think I was, I thought I was going to go and study music. Mm. Um, but then I took a gap year and I thought about, about where my passions truly lie. And I, I thought, yeah, but mm. came to conclusion that uh, it would be acting. Okay, so no musical instruments at the Frank Peterson? Was it really... It was just voice for okay. me. I just, yeah. I just took voice and music literacy. Um, and I was trained by the lovely Jonette Lecay okay. <laughs> <laughs> for five years. Yeah. And um, yeah, she's been a pivotal part of, of who I've become and how I see the arts. Mm. Not, not necessarily music, but the arts in general and yeah. my career. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just tell me a little bit about your, uh, about your childhood a bit. So... <laughs> Can you tell me a bit about it? Were you, were you the, always the talkative person? Were you the actor in the house? I love how you, how you say actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, the performer. In yeah. <laughs> uh, my childhood was pretty cool. It was, it was laid back. I think, I think I had a pretty cool upbringing. Okay. Um, I think I was very lucky in the sense that I, I was brought up in a house where, where I was encouraged to, to express myself, mm. whether it's musically or or dramatically, yeah. or whether it's in sports. Yeah. Um, my, my childhood was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I, always, I was always on the stage. Yeah. I was always in some sort of sporting field, mm. sports field. Mm. Um, yeah, okay. that my childhood yeah. was filled with fun. Yeah. You know, I had a lot of energy, it was, it was cool. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. So if you weren't the actor, what would you be? Probably a lawyer. <laughs> okay. A lawyer or a musician. All right. Um, Which instrument? Voice or guitar. Okay. okay. Um, or both. Probably yeah. both. Yeah. I like the spotlight. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do. 
Um, one of my mottos in life is to find your light. Oh, so after the gap year, what happened after the gap year? When did that? When did it? When did you get into the industry? What was it? Well, first then I was I enrolled into uh, the UCT drama department, okay. called UCT, um, where I studied theatre and performance. Yeah. Um, and then my first gig appeared in my in my in my third year. Okay, nice. Homeland. Yeah. So just for uh, just for the guys, it's. So the, the way I found out about Roberto is he took part or he played in Homeland, which is an international award-winning series, and that's when I uh, that's when he piqued my interest. So I just, of course, want to know was Homeland edition. What happened with the call? It's an international <laughs> series. How was the edition? Were there a thousand people? Just um, well, I mean, it was it was like any other audition, nerve-wracking yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, it was my first ever audition, so it was by a by a by a by nervous. Okay. In Bang because I, I didn't have any formal screen training at the time. Okay. Um, but I went to the casting and it was done by um, Munin Lee. Okay. Um, I went and I didn't get the part. Okay. Immediately, um, that specific part. About uh, about a week ago after that, yeah. um, I was called for another Roman okay. audition. I eventually got the part, um, okay. and that's that's how it started. But it was it was nerve wracking mm. at the time. Also, I don't think being in my third year and being so young, I, I didn't think it, it dawned on mm. me what what a big opportunity mm. it was. I wasn't familiar with mm. with Homeland at yeah. the time. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's how that happened. So, so explain to me. So the audition, they give you a script, they tell you to go study, and then you prepare for it, and then you go on stage, and that's the audition. How does that? How does well, that? I mean, yes. Okay. You know, okay. It's, um, sometimes you don't necessarily have a script. Okay. Sometimes they tell you what to do mm -hmm. in the spur of the moment. But uh, with most auditions, you get you get sides. Mm. You don't get the full script. Yeah. Um, so you get the sides. You go and prepare yeah. what's necessary. Um, okay. And then, <laughs> um, okay, so currently you're very busy. You're busy with the Knaps of Kettles and you're busy with um, Auntie Mo of Mark Lottery yes. that is renewed. Explain to me so, as a youngster, everybody looks up to Mark Lottery and he is like the person that you always like, a, probably a performer. You want to perform with him. How did it come that Mark Lottery picked you to be part of his cast? <laughs> <Ooh. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I've been requested to audition. Yeah. Um, alongside other people. Okay. Um, so I went. Uh, also, it was such a profound moment for me, having walked onto the stage mm. and there's Mark Lottering in the yeah, auditorium. Can you imagine? Um, looking at my audition, mm. you know, uh, because I mean. Like you say, he's just a phenomenal performer, but also he's just a phenomenal person. He, mm. yeah, he's, he's gentle, he's kind, he's humble. Um, and so I've always looked up to him because mm. I feel like he, he's made it possible for, for boys of color, 100%. you know, to, yeah. to see themselves there, mm. you know, and to see themselves as, as the people they want to be one yeah. day. And that's what he represented for me and so many other, other men of color. Mm. Um, okay. So I did my audition, I got mm. the call back and then the call came through, uh, okay. you know, and so that's it, yeah, Bob's yeah. your uncle. So it was last year during the festive season? The run was last yeah. year during the festive season, yes. Okay, and, then the and obviously the auditions were a, a couple of months okay. beforehand. Yeah, yeah. And, but how's it, how's it working with him? Because I mean, he's got it's, so much knowledge at, experience. At all. At yeah, all. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's amazing. Every night I go onto stage and I come off stage kind of having to pinch myself because, uh, I mean, getting the opportunity to work opposite such a renowned comedian mm, and mm, actor mm. and just person it's, it's so humbling yeah um and i get to learn every night yeah you know okay. but also being able to be in a moment and go this is exactly where you're supposed to be this is exactly what you're supposed to be doing with your life for both mm. um mm. is extremely humbling mm. um and having to experience that night after night yeah. after night in front of a sold out audience yeah. as as for my Bye bye in Yebrechen, mm, okay. Yebrechen so, so last time we chatted you said um, the homeland was the homeland uh, piece was the highlight of your career what is it currently the highlight of my career currently yeah. uh, is definitely doing anti mall okay um, and also knaps of okay. I think knaps of is quite a big deal for me at the moment in yeah. my career um, yeah. but also just as a human being because I, I I got to learn so much about 
my own my own being and yeah, yeah. my own depth as a, as, a, as an actor I, okay. I think it's always important to be doing work that will challenge you and that's mm. exactly what okay. Auntie Merle is doing and yeah, that's yeah. exactly what Knapsa Kados is currently doing for me as well because it's taken me out of my comfort zones yeah. both parts nice. um, but Knapsa Kados is, is definitely such a gem mm. at the moment yeah, I, I'm yeah. enjoying the ride mm. I uh, I need to see how people react work I need to see how people react to the work and the boodschap that I live in my style is very hard to do Um, so Knapsa Kerals is your first like series type uh, performance? Well, Knapsa Kerals is my second series, okay, uh, okay. Homeland being the first series, yeah. but Knapsa Kerals is my first big series, yeah, yeah. but okay. like, you know, it's also my first big lead on okay, screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, Skulky. Skulky. <laughs> Skulky. <laughs> um, you know, it's also my big first lead on screen, so I don't know if I'm going to see it. Okay, so I will... Um, like I always have this thing of a, a favorite failure. So the failure that I've had where I've learned the most lessons of or that actually put me on the direction for my, my journey, my path. In your career, what would you say is that favorite failure where you learned the most or it, when you changed direction for your career? I think is when I think the biggest, the biggest lesson that I've learned so far in my career mm. is, to, is to always be, be honest. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, because honesty is what moves people, whether it's on a screen yeah. or on a stage. Yeah. That's yeah. how people connect to other people. Yeah. When you're meant to hear like us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's that's how they can connect to you. Yeah. Um, I think also that that's what it, it gives me a high, mm. Mm. being able to every night be honest and move people differently when meant to hear here. Verschillend of of verschillende dinge. Yeah. I think that's what it interesting makes to see how people different as in that aspect. Mm. Um, but the biggest lesson I've learned is to always be, be honest mm. and tr- to trust that honesty and to yeah, trust yeah. stillness, okay. especially on screen. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. to move people with your. If you had a billboard up in Cape Town, what would that billboard say? My billboard would probably say, "Step into your light." I think it's because nice. it's such. I think light is such an important aspect nice. of creating theatre, yeah. creating film. It's a yeah. big deal, so you yeah. have to always hit your light. Okay. So I mean, being in an industry where you. Where a light shines mm. for you, and mm. I mean, step into it. I mm. mean, it's such a great encouragement okay. to step into your light. And I mean, my name also means bright shining light. So, wow, I Roberto, don't know that. bright shining light. Yeah. Okay. So I think that would be my motto. Okay. Perfect. Just, uh, uh, walk into your light. Step into your light. Magnetikeras <laughs> krach. <laughs> so do you like? You still have family in Paul? Yes, I do. I do. I have my mother um, in Paul and my beautiful sister. Okay. And you um, visit often? I do. I just got back from Paul. Um, okay, stayed nice. for a, a month and a half. Right. Um, yeah, so okay. I, I do. I do visit when I do have the time. I mean, yeah. um, sometimes it gets like really, really busy. tough and like yeah. I have to leave to go and shoot or whatever. Yeah. And so, what else is keeping you busy except for those two? Because those are the tick the boxes you've got. That you've got the, the well, other I mean, stuff in, in currently, like you know, I'm running up and down yeah. to like get to castings and yeah. stuff. But I'm also learning lines for a new big project that that's in the pipeline. Okay. Uh, with uh, the Fuga Theatre. Okay, nice. Um, it's happening soon, but I'll be posting about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't, I don't want Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, something cool is about to happen with the Fuga Theatre. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited about that. Okay, so how are you going to get the troops rallied up to get you the role for Trevor Noah in his new movie? Oh, wow. Hey? Oh, wow. How are we going to get that done? I mean, can I just say that I'm extremely humbled by, by, <laughs> by people <laughs> thinking that I should play this part? The two mentors in your life, I know you mentioned last time your mother was someone pinnacle, but someone outside or two people outside? Well, the first one would definitely be um, Ifram Gordon, okay. who's also from Paul, yeah. actor. Um, I mean, we grew, grew up together and yeah. um, he was almost like my brother. I, I still refer to him as my brother, you know, yeah. and I think, I think it, it was important for me having someone who influenced me in, in the sense that he made me see myself in in the light that 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 made me wanted to go into acting yeah. and and yeah. um, to reach my full potential as okay. as both a human being but also as as a performer. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely Ephraim Gordon. Okay. Um, and then the second would be Jeanette Lacay who okay. coached me for five years um, at FBMC Frank Houston Music Centre. Um, I mean she's she's always been there. Mm. And I think she's she's one of the most giving artists mm. that I have come across. Because she gives so much of herself mm. um, to 
the, the, the art of, of singing, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, but also to her students and, you mm -hmm. know, uh, the people that surround her. She's, she's extremely giving and, and humble yeah. in that way, and I think okay. it's important to have that, those mm -hmm. type of people also mm -hmm. um, in your corner, yeah. you know, the type of people, both like Ifram and, and, and Jonette, yeah. who make you believe that you can do whatever it is okay. that you put your mind to. Um, so definitely from Gordon and, and mm. Jeanette. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. I know last time we chatted, you mentioned that you're doing acting, but there's also something that you really want to pursue later <laughs> on in your life. Um, yes, and it's, I mean, it's still the same. I haven't touched anything about okay. regarding that yeah. yet. Um, but yeah, I, I still want to open up my own label, clothing right. label one day. Okay. Um, and possibly explore, explore directing mm. and writing. There mm. is something that... I want to write, I really want to write a, a, a theatre script. Okay. Um, but I've always been too scared, so mm. I mean, I've been speaking to my friends a lot about it lately and they always just encourage me to, to sit down to write it or to get onto the floor and, uh, yeah. and put it together for just myself, start. workshop it yeah. somehow. But I mean, I'll get there once I've built up enough courage, yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's a story that, that, that's based um, on someone in Paul, actually. Mm. Okay, um, nice. And I think it's a one-hander in my head, it's a, a one-man show. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I also saw you were nominated for best newcomer. Well, tell me a bit about that. Best newcomer, which yeah. which nomination? Um, I saw it. There was a uh, somewhere in social media that you. Uh, uh, I think it, you're referring to the South African Theatre Mag. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes. When was that? It was now. Like I guess it was a couple of months ago. Okay. Um, and I mean, it was it was great to be acknowledged. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I was extremely humbled by it, okay. and I still am. I mean, okay. I love what I do, and it's, yeah. it's always I, great yeah. to be recognized. Because I've noticed, like, over the past two months, like, you're just splashing, you're on the Eisgenoot, you're on Cape Nets, the French <laughs> it's just all over the place. So that's the busy life. I mean, I mean, if that's what puts the bread and butter on the yeah, table, yeah. Come, you know, yeah. um, I, mean, it's, I mean, those things don't, don't necessarily mean anything mm. to me. It's, mm. I want to be on on stage. I want to be in front of a yeah, camera. Yeah. Um, I want to do what I what I love doing, which is telling the stories of my people. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people always go, oh, oh, "My people." What do you mean when you say mm. my people? I mean, when I say, I need to clarify it. When when I say my people, it's I I mean anyone who can relate at the giving project yeah. at hand. So whether yeah. you're a man, whether you are a person of color, yeah. whether you are a colored, yeah. whether you are. Uh, queer, whether, yeah, yeah. Uh, whether you are whatever it is you are that you relate to mm. or define yourself mm. as, yeah. um, that's what I'm supposed to tell. Okay. That's exactly why you're supposed to be in the theatre yeah. to see what I'm saying. Yeah, because yeah. I was watching some of the like the Auntie Mo advertising clips, and if you look at what the whole picture is about, it's like it's touching on every sensitive issue in South Africa. And that's why I think... It's amazing. It's like, I really want to have to watch it. I really have to watch it. I mean, that's why exactly why I think theatre is such a powerful tool, mm. you know. Yeah. And the medium of storytelling, whether it's screen, when I say screen, I mean film or, or TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is why this medium is so important yeah, because yeah. people need to see what is happening yeah, in the world. Yeah. You know, and they need to be confronted by yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and no. I think Auntie Mo is such, it's so cleverly structured mm. in mm. the sense that mm. you laugh at serious issues, mm. you know, whether it's mm. about race, whether it's about um, interracial relationships, whether it's about class, whether it's about homosexuality. Yeah, yeah. These things all. A, a, a thread throughout yeah. the show, but you laugh about it, mm. and you know, and I think I think Auntie Mo Auntie Mo generates a conversation mm. around these topics, mm. which is why theatre is important, yeah. which is why theatre yeah. is such a powerful part. Um, no. Yeah. So, uh, Roberto, those are all my questions again. Uh, yeah. Well, once again, thank you so much. Yeah, for having yeah. Me. it was really, really. It was really, really cool. I, I really enjoyed it. It was actually finally nice meeting you. Likewise. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've been speaking a lot about via the social yeah. social network lines. Um, but I think also it's, it's cool. The initiative of what, what you're creating is, yeah. is quite pivotal. I don't think you will, well, or maybe you do realize mm. it. But um, I, think, I think being able to be represented mm. in a light that, that celebrates being, being a colored, yeah. a man of color, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, is important. Yeah. I think. I think this is why. I think this is why this initiative should, should mm. continue happening, and why people should be supporting it. Mm. Um, mm. Because uh, you know, I think this we we have so many beautiful aspects to us to yeah. us as, as people, yeah. but also as, as as people from Paul. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah totally. Um, I think. I think it's important being able to like be seen 
I step yeah. into the spotlight, you know? I mean, yeah, and I think that I think everyone in power has the potential to, to do that. Yeah. Auntie Mo, is your, you've been very busy with Auntie Mo. Hopefully we see you at the Baxter soon. Hopefully you do. I would love for you all to see me. When is it starting? You know, so, the, so the return season is happening on the 2nd of April, up until the 28th of April. Yeah. Um, and you can book via web tickets um, and pick and pay stores nationwide. Um, and I would love, love for my people to know the audience. Yeah, yeah. we must make it happen. That's a brief <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Miles. It was so, so cool. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Thank you.